Hey guys, this is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make this toilet paper roll cover. Okay, my toilet paper roll cover pattern is made to fit roll of toilet paper that's 5 inches to 12 centimeters and wide and the circumference is 15 and a half inches or 39 and a half centimeters. You're going to need a main color, which is going to be the majority. You'll make the top and the bottom, or I should say the side, make the top and the side with that color, and you'll sew it together, the two pieces, all with the same color. So I recommend having at least your main color, having not a full skein, but most of a skein. And I used scrap yarn, basically, to make the ruffle on the end, and I added a flower on top. So. This is worsted weight yarn, which is 4 ply for the US, 10 ply for Australia. And I used a 5 millimeter hook or a size H hook for the US. You're also going to need a tapestry needle because you'll have to hide in your tails. And I got a pair of scissors. And also, you're going to have to have at least five, five, six, seven, something like that markers because you're going to, to use them to hold on hold this piece in place while you sew it so you need to at least have a few markers on hand okay we're going to be making our top piece first which is this piece here without the flower obviously so we're going to be making that first round top piece so to start you want to chain four this is using your main color too and you want to slip stitch in that beginning first chain to form a ring. Then you're going to, for, for round one, you're going to chain two and now working in this ring here, you're going to put a double crochet and then chain one. And now you're going to be doing this repeat which is two double crochets and chain one. Two double crochets and chain one. Now you're going to repeat that four more times. You'll be putting two double crochets and chain one. Repeat that three more times. You want a total of 12 double crochets and six chain one spaces. We have two, four, six, eight, ten. So these, this is going to be my last two double crochets and after your last two double crochets of the, the round you don't want to chain one you just want to find that that top of that beginning chain two to slip stitch in okay for round two you want to chain two and now this chain one space that you created by slip stitching into the chain let me get a little closer you slip stitch into the top of the chain. You want to find that space underneath. So between these two double crochets, then you did your slip stitch here, and then these two double crochets. In that space, the big space here, we're going to be making our first puff stitch. Sorry, that was a street sweeper or something going by. Uh, so anyway, we're going to make our first puff stitch. So what you want to do is yarn over, go into that stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, go into that stitch, pull up a loop. You want to do that three times. So do it one more time. Yarn over, go into that stitch, pull up a loop. Should have seven loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all seven loops, and then chain one. And this is going to be your half, because we're going to end, our, end the row by putting our second puff in there. Then you want to chain one. Actually, you want to chain two because that is a complete uh, cluster. We'll finish it later, but once you complete two clusters and a stitch, then you'll chain two. But in between the two clusters, you'll only chain one. So let's find our next big space here, and now we're going to do our first full set of double clusters. So you'll yarn over, go into that chain one space, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook. Yarn over, go into the space for a second time, pull it up, five loops on your hook. Yarn over for the third and final time, pull up a loop, seven loops on your hook. 
you'll yarn over, pull through all seven loops, and only chain one. Now you're going to be working in that same space, so yarn over and do the exact same way of making the puff stitch. You're going to be yarning over and inserting your hook three times to have seven loops on your hook. Pull through all seven loops and now after the second one you'll be chaining two before moving over to the next one. So remember we only do one chain in between the two puffs but we'll chain two before we start our next double set of puffs. And this is what you're going to do for all of your chain one spaces. So I chained one and now I'm doing my second puff stitch. Then after my two in the same stitch, I'll chain two and move over to my next. And I'll, I have one, two, three more to do and then I'll come up to finish my last one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back here. Okay, just finished my last double puff stitch here. Do my chain two. And then now you want to come in and finish the second puff stitch for this space, the beginning space. So pull through all seven. Go ahead and chain one and then find the space. Not the top of the chain two, but inside the space of the chain two to do your slip stitch. And that will end round two. Okay, for round three, you want to do, I hope I'm not too close here, you want to do a chain two, and then you'll put a single puff in the space here, just like we did last row. We're only going to put it one, we're only going to do half of the stitch here. So put your single puff there, and chain one, no, chain two. Now, in the spaces between our V puffs here and our chain two spaces, we're going to be working a V stitch. And a V stitch will consist of a double crochet, chain two, and then a double crochet, all worked in that same chain two space. And then in your your V puffs here, you'll want to do what you did last row. You'll put, except in between this row, you're going to be putting a chain of two. So put your first puff, one, two, three, pull through all seven loops and chain two, then yarn over, finish that puff stitch and I believe you chain one. And then in this next chain two space, you'll put your V stitch. So double crochet, chain two, double crochet. And then chain one. Okay, so you're going to have a chain one before and after your V stitches and your chain twos now come in between your clusters. So in this next one, since we already did our chain one after the V-stitch, we're going to do our next puff. And then after our first puff, we'll chain two and then we'll finish our puff. And then only chain one, do your V stitch, which is, a, which is a double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and then chain one before you start your cluster. So you'll do your puff, and then chain two, and do your puff. And you'll be repeating this for the rest of the row. After your second puff, then you'll only chain one, and do your V stitch in your chain two space. So double crochet, chain two, double crochet on the same stitch, then chain one, and then you'll start your puff. Your puff, chain two, puff. And then you'll continue that all the way down your row and then till we finish our second puff and our beginning stitch. Just finished up my last V stitch and chain one. Now I'm gonna finish my second puff stitch in my beginning stitch. Then I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to slip stitch again. There's the chain that began. I'm going to be doing it in that space in between the chain and the first puff and slip stitch into that stitch. 
and that ends round three. Okay, so round four, and round four is the final stitch, I mean the final row of the lid, the whatever you want to call it, um, the top. So to begin this row, as always, you'll chain two and do your first single puff in this first one. And then now we're going to be doing chain two after everything. So after your puff, you'll do a chain two. And now working in the V stitches and the cluster stitches this row. So we're not going to be working in the space, the chain one spaces in between. Only the chain two spaces between our V stitch and our cluster. And in our V stitch here, we're going to be putting the regular puff stitch, chain two and then puff stitch worked in that same V stitch. Then again chain two, you'll be chain two after every stitch. Then you'll do the same thing for your puff. You'll be putting a V puff in every stitch and all your V stitches and all your cluster V uh, your V puff things here. So basically you're going to do the same thing in every single stitch putting two puff stitches and chain two. And your V stitches, again, you're going to be putting two puff stitches. So you do your first puff stitch, chain two, second puff stitch, chain two, find your next space, do another puff stitch, chain two, then your second puff stitch, chain two and you're going to continue two puff stitches chain two in between I mean in each stitch of your V stitches and your clusters chain two so you're going to continue that all the way around okay I'm finishing my second puff and my very first stitch chain one and then in that space between the puff and the chain slip stitch then chain one and leave a little bit of a tail that you can hide with a tapestry needle and pull your yarn through and that's how you make the top piece okay so um, this is going to be the side of your holder and you're going to be using the main color again and you want to do 40 single crochet foundation stitches. Now I, I don't want to turn this into a single crochet foundation, <laughs> foundation stitch uh, tutorial because I actually have one already so if you don't know how to make uh, single crochet foundation stitches I recommend that video. I'll put the link down below. And uh, so I'll show you how to make one and then you can continue. Hopefully that will be enough or hopefully you already know or check out the video. So. You want to start by chaining two, then you'll go into this top loop space of the very first chain, let me get a little closer here, very first chain here, and you're going to yarn and, yarn and pull up one loop. Then you'll yarn over and pull through only one of those loops, and then you'll yarn over and pull through both of them. Now on the side here you have two loops. So you're going to be going in through this bottom one again to pull up a loop. Then you're going to yarn over again, only pull through one of those loops, and then yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And again, you have two on the side, and again, you'll go through that first one. Pull up only one, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. So if you need me to go through it a few more times, you can find that video or just rewind it. So you can see on the side here that I have one, two, three uh, single crochets. So I want to do this until I have 40 total. So go ahead and do that and I'll see you when you get done. Okay, so once you have your 40 single crochet foundation stitches, you want to create a loop. So you want to, I'm going to hang on to my piece here and just pull this section around. so that it's folded in half like this so that all the sides are together 
then slip stitch in the very first single crochet. So the very first single crochet foundation stitch that you made, slip stitch. And then you want to chain two. This is uh, the start of round one. You'll chain two. And now you want to skip the stitch that you just slip stitched into. And also the very next single crochet, you'll skip that one as well. And so in the next stitch, the third stitch over, you're going to be putting a puff stitch in there. So you'll yarn over, insert your hook in there. And remember, you'll yarn over and insert your hook three times until you have seven loops. Yarn over, pull through all seven loops, and then you'll only be chaining one before doing your second puff stitch worked in the same stitch. Then again you'll chain one. Now you'll skip the next stitch, and then the following stitch here you'll be putting a double crochet. So yarn over and put a double crochet. And then again let me just make sure, uh, no, you don't, you don't chain before or after your double crochet. You're just going to be skipping a stitch, double crochet, and then we'll skip the next stitch. And then in the following one, we'll be doing our repeat of putting our puff stitch there. So skip a stitch, and then in the next, start your puff stitch. Pull through all seven loops, chain one. Then do your second puff stitch in that same stitch. Pull through all seven loops and chain one. Then again, we'll be skipping one, double crochet, and skipping one. So skip this first one, double crochet in the next. Then skip the next stitch, and you'll start your V. Whoops, I'm trying to pull through. Start your V cluster again. Your two puff stitches. Well, I guess it's called V stitch. Uh, puff stitch V. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about, right? So you'll chain one after, then again skip one, double crochet, skip one, and then you'll be doing your whatever you want to call this thing again. Oh, you know, it kind of looks like a heart. So do your heart. <laughs> so skip a stitch and then you'll do your puff heart. Chain one. Do your next puff. So you'll be doing this all the way around. This last one, of course, is trying to be cheeky. I'm going to have to redo them again. Anyway, um, so you're going to keep doing that repeat all the way around. And at the beginning here, this chain two is essentially like a double crochet stitch. So when you get done with your last puff here, you'll be skipping your last stitch and then slip stitching in the top of the chain two there to end your row but I'll come back here and I'll show you. Okay I'm finishing my last puff here my last little area pull through all chain one and then in this top of the chain two or beginning chain two slip stitch and that ends round one now for round two, and round two is the repeat, so you can replay this one again and again. You want to start by chaining two, and then moving right into our cluster heart, our puff heart, I guess is what I'm going to call it. And you'll be putting your puff stitch chain one, and then your puff stitch. And then you'll double crochet in your double crochet and then you move over to your next and you'll put your two clusters you'll put your first cluster chain one then your second I keep saying cluster but I mean puff and then chain one and then you'll move over to your double crochet and you'll put a double crochet in your double crochet super super easy so you want to continue that all the way around. Remember, your end, to end your row, you'll always slip stitch on the top of the chain two. And you want to repeat row two until you have a total of seven rows. So continue this until you have a total of seven puff rows. And then I'll show you how to end it and put your pieces together. 
Okay, when you get done with the last of your seven rows, then you're going to slip stitch in the same top of the beginning chain two. Then you'll chain one and cut your yarn, leaving a little bit of a tail to work in. And I recommend get your top piece as well and grab your tapestry needle and before you get started hide all those tails. Now I always like to go more than one way so I'll go down these side puffs and then I'll go through and go up going the other direction. Pull that through. And I always tug on my piece a little bit before I cut it. And you want to do the same for your bottom one and do the same for this one. I'll go through puff area and then I'll come back up through the other puff area. Okay, so now you want to get your top piece, your side piece, and your toilet paper roll. It, it helps so much to mark your pieces for sewing on a toilet paper roll. So go ahead and make sure you're putting it on the right side so my puffs are going up this way. So this is the side I want. I want it to go over like this. My puffs go in the right way. And then you can pick whichever side. Oh, I forgot to hide this one. But I usually go from this. Though sometimes this looks a little bit more puffy. But if you put a heart, then you won't see it anyway. So put that top piece on like this and now you're going to be using, so you don't have enough puffs going this way as you do along the sides. You have a lot more rows of puffs going along. So you're not going to be able to perfectly align puff to puff, like from your puffs on your top to align them with the puff on the side. But for some of them you will and I recommend using that as a starting point. So first grab your first marker and you're going to go in through between your two puffs here on this piece and then find some puffs, two puff stitches on this side and go up through that. Then you'll get your piece of string, put it on your hook in half like this. Then you'll pull it through each of those pieces like this with this loop now on the end. Then you'll grab your tails and pull it through that loop and then you can pull and tighten. That's how you hold your piece. Now I'm going to go from here and then I'm going to go on the opposite side. And I'll have a, some puffs running like this and I turn it this way and there's puffs running down here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that same alignment of my puffs on this side. Do it when you can but just know you won't be able to do it only because there are less puff rows on the top. But I maneuver it and I think I'm going to put at least a couple more on this side and a couple more on this side just to hold it in place. But depending on how good of a sewer you are you may want to add extra. I like to make sure that my piece isn't going to move so much. Actually I think I'm going to move this one down a little bit more. Okay, so once you have your piece completely marked, then you want to go ahead and take it off your toilet paper roll because it makes it a little bit easier. And I got my, you want to get your secondary color and I always make it my setting a little bit further down because I like to leave a tail to be able to work in. It just gives it more of a clean finish when you're done. And I gave this tip in my pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and give it to you on video so you can see a little bit about what I mean. When I was talking about the puff stitches on this side and then a lined up one like this, the puff stitches on this side, I'm going to start in a place like that and remove my marker. You want to insert your hook under both of those and then you're going to pull up a loop. Yarn over pull through two loops. That's how you do your single crochet attachment. Now when I was doing this, I realized when I when it was aligned like this, puff on this side, puff on this side, that the next is a double crochet. 
and the double crochet would fall in alignment with the chain two on this side and I could put in a single crochet chain one and a single crochet chain one on either side of my uh, double crochet and it would both end up in the chain two and it would keep it kind of even but it only worked uh, for uh, the beginning because of course it gets out of alignment so just to help you get started I recommend doing that same thing so what you're going to do for this whole sewing process is single crochet chain one and then you're going to move over to the next space and then you'll put a single crochet chain one single crochet chain one so we're going to be using our spaces in between when possible and in our heart puff things so I'm going to start by chaining one then I'm going to go into the space before the double crochet and I'm going to come out that chain two that's on my top here and I'm going to do a, a single crochet there then chain one then get on the other side of your double crochet which is in that same chain two from the on the top piece and you'll do a single crochet and chain one there which brings us up to puff stitch on both sides and I'm just going to put a single crochet chain one in there and then you can move your next marker now this is where you need to make sure that you're going in through what's even so from now on I'm going to go in through looks like I'm only going to go one this is my chain two space here I'm only going to go through one because I can just feel that my piece would be bunched up if I try to put two there so when I go through the other side here of my double crochet I'm actually going to be going through a cluster on my top here and I'll do a single crochet whoops single crochet and chain one then I'll go through my cluster and on the other side is the chain two single crochet chain one you just have to feel feel around I'm going through before my double crochet here and it feels like I'm going into the chain two again this time on the other side of my double crochet I'm going into the chain one space and on the other side is a puff just keep checking your piece make sure that it's not being getting bulked up just keep going now where it's aligned as much as you can I have a puff stitch here it looks like a chain space on the other side so I'm going to just single crochet crochet there and chain one move my marker as long as you're keeping it aligned and not letting it bulk up you can just work along the top as you go trying to keep it from getting too tight trying to stay as consistent as you can make your way around slowly all the way around single, single crochet chain one and I'll see you when you get back up to the beginning here I'm getting up to my end here I guess my last stitch is going to go here and instead of chaining one your very last single crochet just slip stitch in that beginning single crochet and that slip stitch will become your chain one and then chain one and cut your yarn giving yourself enough tail to hide hide your tails there so now you want to flip it over to the bottom side now and you're still going to be using your secondary color and again I'm going to start my slip knot down a little bit more than I need to just to have that tail to work in to have a more cleaner look and we're going to be using the bottom stitches of our beginning single crochet foundation stitches and I usually go under more than just the single one here I'm actually going in through the same stitch because I want to have it stronger so when possible I'll go into that but it's up to you if you go through this bottom part here it just seems a little weak to me but the more stitches that you can get three triple crochets into the more ruffle that you have at the bottom so it's up to you so you want to do a triple crochet attachment and how you do that is that you you are going to yarn over twice and then you're going to find the stitch you want to go into I'm going to use the bottom of my puff stitch here the same stitch my puff stitch worked into and I'm going to insert my hook there and pull up a loop four loops on the hook 
you'll yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and yarn over and pull through those final two and now you're attached with a triple crochet and you're going to want three triple crochets worked in each stitch so you need to do two more triple crochets in that same stitch so yarn over twice go into that same stitch pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through two loops three times then you'll do the same thing yarn over twice go into that same stitch and do a triple crochet three triple crochets in one stitch then yarn over twice and again I'm going into the thicker part of the stitch and I'm going to put three triple crochets and you will do this all the way around putting three triple crochets in each stitch along your bottom so continue to do that and I'll see you at the end of this row okay just got my last three triple crochets worked to my very last stitch and now you just want to slip stitch in that very first triple crochet and chain one and then cut your yarn leaving a bit of a tail that you can work in and now I'm going to take a moment get my tapestry needle and hide my tails and also I'm going to make uh, a rose using this the rest of my little flower here if you want to know how to make a rose uh, the one that I made I'll have a link to the tutorial so you can find out how to make that rose okay so once you get all your tails hidden you can go over to the rose video and by the way that little bit of uh, white that I had was not enough I needed about uh, probably double that little amount that I had to finish my rows and cut your rows with a long tail so that you have and I, I start by putting my hook I'm kinda going in the center row so I guess it's uh, the second row I'm gonna go on the top of that puff there just to have a piece a marker situation basically it, it needs to be off enough to the side because you want to sew going around the edges of it and around that area so what I did is I would just go up and then back in through the next and then I would just scoop it up like that that way you wouldn't have to keep going up and down up and down up and down so this is where I came up so I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna scoop up some stitches from underneath and then come through and you can keep adjusting it how you need going through one just see so I'm going at the one side of this petal and kind of aiming to come out somewhere on the other side of it and every time you do that just make sure that your flower is staying in the middle as you work your way around I did that till I reached the beginning of where I was and I, I'm tugging it a little bit just to make sure it's not going to be too tight after I pull it then I did actually go in through and come out through the top area somewhere just to give the center so that the center won't be all wobbly and loose that way you can connect the center a little bit then after that you can go through a stitch couple stitches like this holding your tail and I can set my needle to the side now and I'm going to use this hook and the tail that I have just to tie two or three knots here and then I just cut my tail it doesn't have to be long I don't really hide the thing in the middle back up get my toilet bowl roll toilet paper roll again and there you go that is how you make the rose flower I guess you can call it rose flower the um, 
toilet paper roll cover. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please don't forget to like and share this video. It helps me out so much. And if you guys want to get notified whenever I release a new tutorial, you can click on that little bell button next to the subscribe button on, your, on my main YouTube page and click on all notifications and you'll always be notified whenever I release a new tutorial or something on my channel. Uh, I have a couple of groups on Facebook, one called Crochet Zone Public, which is a lot of other designers will also share what's coming out new with them. And I also have more of a private group, uh, if you prefer that, and it's called Crochet for the Masses. I also have a community on Pinterest where I share, as long as other designers, free crochet pattern links. So if you're on Pinterest, that's a great source for you to find spam-free links to free crochet patterns. Also, I have an email list, so if you want to be notified by email, you can go down below and find the link, and you can click that and sign up for my email and always be notified that way. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching.